the place, uh, since her body couldn't be found there. But in Catholicism, there is the belief in assumption of Mother Mary, and in this case, it's all about faith, it's all about personal beliefs. During crucifixion, Jesus entrusted her to his best friend, John, who we know came to Ephesus. Then he was exiled to the Greek Isle of Patmos, where he received the revelation. And we think he might have accompanied her all the way up here instead of Ephesus downtown, most probably to take her away from Roman persecution. In 1820s, a Catholic nun in Germany named Anne Catherine Emmerich, who had never been abroad, who had never been to this region, she started seeing visions in her dreams. And her visions were about Mother Mary and where she lived. There were priest doctors looking after her, as well as a German writer named Clemens Brentano, eyewitness what was happening to her. In the meantime, he took his personal notes. Then he wrote a book about her visions. And that book was read by Paul, who was the superior of the Lazarists in Smyrna, my home city. And then after a little while, they found the foundation of a house here. The foundation, the territory, the landscape, type of the trees, distance to the coast, you know, such details match the details given by Anne Catherine Emmerich. So excavations started around the foundation. This time they found quite many graves belonged to local priests in time and they noticed that each gravestone was facing the house direction. They also did a carbon-14 test on the organic materials they found on the foundation and they carbon dated it back to 1st century AD. So far, three popes visited this house here, Pope Paul VI, Jean Paul II, and Benedict XVI. Pope Paul VI, in 1967, he declared that this is a holy place, a sacred place for Christianity. By the way, be advised, it's not only a sacred place for Christians, but also for Muslims. Very interesting point. But Mother Mary's name is listed in the New Testament for 19 times and in Koran. You know Koran? Mm. Her name is listed for 34 times. And she is mentioned as the holiest woman at all. That's why a lot of uh, Turkish people, a lot of Muslims, they come here as pilgrims. So, talking about Mother Mary, I'd like to mention a very interesting uh, point a fact about Turkey. Uh, remember I said Turkey, Asian part of Turkey is Asia Minor. There's also another uh, term for Asia Minor, Anatolia. Have you heard of this term? Anatolia is derived from ancient Greek Anatolika that means East. Anatolia in Turkish is Anadolu. A-N-A, -A, Ana means mother in Old Turkish. D-O-L-U, Dolu means full in Turkish. So, mother full or full of mothers. Isn't it a beautiful name for such a prosperous, such a fertile land? And a beautiful name for a land where Mother Goddess Cult started in history. We have two famous rivers southeast of Turkey, flowing all the way down to the south, forming the great prosperous land of Mesopotamia. And these rivers are known as Tigris and Euphrates. Yeah. In the very beginning, they flow, they give the land a special shape of a crescent. That is the heart of the famous fertile crescent. That's where the mother goddess cult started in history in this world. Starting with Ashtarte, Astaroth, the mother goddess cult in Judaic mythology. Ishtar, Easter, Esther, Kubaba, Kibele, Sibyl, Sibel, the Greek Artemis, the Roman Diana, right? So this is the land of Mother Goddesses, everybody, Asia Minor, land of Mother Goddesses. Still today, in every Turkish house, you will come across with a Mother Goddess. Our dear ladies, our dear wives, we consider them as Mother Goddesses. Uh, in the Western world, many people are biased. They think we Turks, we're a patriarchal community. Men are in charge in Turkey. It's incorrect. Decision makers at home, they're always women.
Of course, we have macho men. You know, macho men, they love to make the final calls. Uh, but they all end up with the same line with us. Yes, dear. Whatever you want.